we were looking at similarities that has to do with God's swearing concerning the bondage of Israel in Egypt and the Babylonian captivity, which relates to the time of the Great Tribulation. There's five main similarities. And if you're writing this down, you can put in one column that this relates to Egypt historically. And in the other column, you could title it Babylon slash Great Tribulation. Number one, the captivity of Israel in Egypt relates to the captivity of the Jews in Babylon historically and the captivity of God's people leaving the churches and going out into the world at the time of the Great Tribulation. And they are spiritually similar. Number two, the Jews, the Israelites, multiplied while in bondage in Egypt according to the promise of God. And likewise, God's elect multiplied in the world, spiritually typified by Babylon, at the end of the church age when God commanded to leave the church through the figure in the book of Jeremiah, leave Judea, and go into captivity to Babylon. Typified during the Great Tribulation, come out of the church and worship God in the world. And it was in the world, slash Babylon, that God saved the great multitude i.e. the spiritual Israel multiplied. It is a very parallel situation spiritually. The Israelites multiplied in Egypt, and the spiritual Israel of God multiplied in Babylon of this world during the last 17 years or so of the Great Tribulation. Number three, there was a time of great deliverance for Israel that had been held in bondage in Egypt. God remembered his promise, and as we read in the book of Acts, when the time of the promise drew near, God remembered his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he delivered his people. How many Israelites were delivered? Every one of them. Not one. Not a single one. Isn't that something? You know, oftentimes people can be forgotten, left behind, but not one Jew. Not one Israelite was left behind in Egypt. Every one that was in that captivity came out. And that points to great deliverance and complete deliverance. It really points to the deliverance of all Israel. Not one was lacking. And likewise, God saved the great multitude out of great tribulation in Babylon of this world. And he saved them all, everyone whose name was recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. The entire company of spiritual Israel were delivered out of bondage to sin and Satan. And they came out of Babylon, delivered out of Babylon by May 21, 2011, Every single spiritual Jew was delivered from Babylon, from this world. They no longer were held in the dungeon of sin, in captivity to Satan in his kingdom. But the Lord Jesus Christ had set them all free and delivered them all. What another wonderful parallelism, similarity that is with the exodus from Egypt and the exodus from the spiritual bondage to sin that the elect, those individuals chosen from before the foundation of the world that they were blessed to experience prior to God shutting the door on May 21, 2011. Well then, following the great deliverance with Egypt, this is number four, there was a 40-year period of testing for all of Israel that came out of Egypt. Now remember, we're charting the similarities between the Israelites' Egyptian bondage and God's people's bondage in the Babylon of this world. We saw there was captivity alike. There was multiplication of God's people alike. There was a time of great deliverance for the Israelites and also, May 21, 2011 was a time of great deliverance for the people of God, for God's elect. 
What did God do to work a great deliverance? Well, he simply saved everyone whose name was recorded in the book of life. God saved everyone to be saved. You can't get any more salvation than that. God chose certain individuals. We don't know exactly. There's a very good likelihood that the number is 200 million souls that he predestinated to obtain salvation. And then God fulfilled his obligation. He guaranteed they would become saved. And then down through the history of the world, he went to work saving them in generation after generation until the time of the end when he determined to save the best for last. And he saved the great multitude out of great tribulation. And that completed the salvation program of God And what wonderful deliverance it was by May 21, 2011, the whole company of God's elect, as it were, marched out of Babylon, out of this world, and into the kingdom of God's dear Son, translated from darkness to light in the city of God, even though they remained upon this earth. But spiritually, they were lifted up and exalted into heavenly places to be seated in Christ Jesus. And so there was great salvation, uttermost salvation. You just cannot get any additional salvation. It's like God delivered all the Israelites out of Egypt. And again, not one was left behind. And now the Israelites are en route. They're marching to the promised land because God has taken them out of Egypt. And it's as though people in their company are saying, well, yes, it was great that God delivered us. But what about other Jews that are still in captivity in Egypt? And you see, the problem is there are no more Jews left in captivity in Egypt. They all came out. And that's the problem with people saying, well, what about the people that are out there in the world today? Well, they are not part of spiritual Israel. If there are unsaved individuals today, they were not named from the foundation of the world. They were not included in the Lamb's book of life. And so it's not as though there is anything lacking, that there is any one additional to be added to God's kingdom. This is God's program. And just as God is sovereign in determining who he would save, as he said, Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. I will have mercy upon whom I will have mercy. That is God's sovereign right as God to save whom he will. Well, God likewise is sovereign over when he will save. And he determined a time period in which the day of salvation would occur, an elongated, a prolonged period of time that lasted for hundreds and hundreds of years, a time in which God besought men to be reconciled to him. And he did this through his messengers, his ambassadors. Be ye reconciled to God, a time in which God sought men to seek him while he may be found. While, that's a time reference, during the day of salvation. But then God also told the world the time when he would no longer be found, the time the day of salvation would conclude and the day of judgment would begin, May 21, 2011. Now I will no longer be found. The door shuts. The sun is darkened. The light of the gospel goes out. The voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride shall be heard no more at all in her. And so on and so on with types and figures in many places in the Bible. God constantly affirms this is my sovereign will. My sovereign decree. I will end my salvation program at a set time, the appointed day of judgment, and I am sovereign over when I save. 
Well, the fourth item on this chart would be the 40-year test that follows the great deliverance. And that relates to the 1600 days, which is the very likely time duration for this period of judgment. 1600 breaks down to 40 times 40. 40 times 40 equals 1600. Isn't that something? That God would emphasize 40 with Israel that came out of Egypt. And God is certainly greatly emphasizing 40 through the number 1600 that ties into May 21, 2011 and the day of great deliverance for God's elect. The great multitude that came out of great tribulation. 40 40s. Testing is in view in both cases. It is our hope. At this point, it's our expectation at the end of the 1600 days, we look with true hope towards that day as a genuine possibility that that will be the day when God completes his judgment, when God finishes his testing, and when God raises up all those that waited for him and endured to the end, to that last day of the Feast of Tabernacles, and those that were alive and remained upon the earth will then be raptured after the Lord resurrects the dead bodies of the saints and joins them with their souls, and then all those living and remaining on the earth will be caught up to be with the Lord. 